Hello, my name is Carolyn Conlon, and I will be reading from Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, with notes by Susan Ostrov Weiser, Chapter 9, page 83. April advanced to May. A bright, serene May it was. Days of blue sky, placid sunshine, and soft western or southern gales filled up its duration. And now vegetation matured with vigor. Lowood shook loose its tresses. It became all green, all flowery. Its great elm, ash, and oak skeletons were restored to majestic life. Woodland plants sprung up profusely in its recesses. Unnumbered varieties of moss filled its hollows, and it made a strange ground sunshine out of the wealth of its wild primrose plants. I have seen their pale gold gleam in overshadowed spots, like scatterings of the sweetest luster. All this I enjoyed often and fully free, unwatched and almost alone. For this unwanted liberty and pleasure, there was a cause, to which it now becomes my task to advert. Have I not described a pleasant sight for a dwelling, when I speak of it as bosomed in hill and wood, and rising from the verge of a stream? Assuredly, pleasant enough, but whether healthy or not is another question. That forest dell, where a low wood lay, was the cradle of fog and fog-bred pestilence, which, quickening with the quickening spring, crept into the orphan asylum, breathed typhus through its crowded schoolroom and dormitory, and, ere May arrived, transformed the seminary into a hospital. In this selection, there are a few words that we might be unfamiliar with. Placid means calm or peaceful. Tresses are long locks of hair. Unwanted means unusual or unexpected. Luster is a quality something has when it shines or reflects light. Finally, a pestilence is a deadly epidemic disease. Miss Bronte employed a number of different literary techniques throughout the selection. She used metaphors in various instances. An example of this is when the text says, Lowood shook loose its tresses. The word tresses is usually used to describe a woman's hair. However, here she is personifying Lowood Academy and comparing it to a woman letting her hair down to relax. This metaphor helps the reader understand how Lowood was changing during this time. She also used this technique with the phrase, oak skeletons. She compares the trees to skeletons, describing how they look during the winter. They are barren, like bones. Bronte used simile when describing the primrose plants. She said they had a gold gleam, which was like scatterings of the sweetest luster. She used this simile to capture the light that was emanating from the plants. This selection is really interesting because she begins by describing the good things about Lowood in a very gentle and loving way. She pays great attention to detail, and nature is a prominent theme in this selection. However, she is merely setting the reader up for a complete reversal. Her descriptions starkly contrast the harsh, dark reality of what Lowood was really like in this time. Everything outside of the school was blossoming into new life, whereas the school itself was ridden with disease and death. This says a great deal about the character and strength of Jane Eyre, the narrator of the story. She always strives to seek the good, even when it is hard to find. In the last paragraph of this selection, Bronte used the phrase, fog-bred pestilence. This may not make much sense, but some historical context might make it a little clearer. In the mid-19th century, which is when Charlotte Bronte wrote Jane Eyre, people believed that they could catch diseases from noxious odors or the atmosphere. It wasn't until later in the 19th century that scientists discovered that diseases originated from germs and microbes. The songs used in this podcast are entitled Suonatore de Liuto and Life of Riley, composed by Kevin MacLeod. They were not altered in any way. Thank you for listening. This is Carolyn Conlon, and I wish you a great day.